Howdy folks, Spencer here, and today I want to go over this ultimate phaser scatter volley build that I've put together on the Inquiry Battle Cruiser. This build is being done at the request of a friend and fleetmate of mine, Chili. He specifically requested a no holds barred DPS munching cannon scatter volley build on the Inquiry. That to me means using everything I have at my disposal to make this build as good as possible. However, I decided to take an approach that would apply to general content rather than focusing specifically on something for Infected Space Elite. So I'm not doing something like the Enhanced Biomolecular Torpedo with Subspatial Warheads. That is a very powerful trait and would push this ship higher in Infected Elite. However, it would not be the best choice for general content, especially being that this is a non-command ship and you can't really fit a high yield on without making some sort of sacrifice on the build. And I will also note that there may be other approaches to squeeze a bit more out here or there, but this is just my take on the ship with how I build ships and with the gear that I had available. You know, my way is not the only way, I know that. I may not be making the best decisions here, but this is the way that I would build the ship. So that is what I'm going to be presenting to you, my take on building the ship. So here's a quick picture just showing the general build overview, and if you want to read the entire PowerPoint rather than listen to me talk for the next 30 or so slides, then feel free to click the link in the, down in the description below to check out the PowerPoint. So let's dive into the forward weapons. Of course, being a scatter volley build, the first cannon that I'm going to be using is the Terran Task Force Phaser dual heavy cannons that you, that you get from having tier 6 of the Terran Reputation. These things hit insanely hard. I think many of you know the Disruptor variant, and that Phaser variant that you can get is just as good. It is really, really powerful. The reason it's so powerful is that it does more damage as the target's HP decreases, and it will do up to twice its damage when that target is down to 25% HP, so... You can understand why a weapon that aggressively gets more powerful is something that people would very much want to slot. After that, I decided to use the Wide Arc Phase Cannons. These are from the Lobby Store, and it doesn't really matter if you use these or a different Wide Arc. The reason I went for them is they have a fairly decent little proc on them that will give you a very small energy and projectile damage boost uh, when you hit a, sh hit a target that has no shields up on it, on that shield facing. It's good, but it's not like, insanely good. If you have a wide arc already, you don't really need this one. I just have it, and being it does provide a small guaranteed buff, I decided to use it. Then we have the phaser quad cannons off of the Tier 3 Defiant, the Sao Paulo class, which I'm definitely mispronouncing that. You can get this with Dilithium now, but if you're an older player like myself, you probably have it unlocked in the C store already. These things, you know, they, they do okay. Uh, they're just a smidge better than the dual heavy cannons I had on, but they do also drain engine power alongside the weapon power, so keep that in mind. If you just wanted to run another dual heavy cannon, it wouldn't make that much of a difference. And then the last two forward weapons that I went with were sensor-linked phaser dual heavy cannons. And for all of these weapons, I have spec'd them for crit D damage as the epic mod, and then damage times 3 or damage times 4. Crit D is a perfectly fine modifier, and if you are if you re-roll a, re a weapon and you get crit D 4 on it, it's not going to make that big of a difference. Crit D and damage are both viable options. Crit D provides just a flat crit severity bonus, and damage provides a damage bonus that's going to come in effect after all of the other damage bonuses you have. So stacking damage can be good if you're using a lot of damage boost, but crit D is still perfectly capable. Now I want to discuss these forward weapons a bit more. As I said, the Terran Dual Heavy Cannon is the best cannon in the game, and as such it is a must-have. The Wide Arc isn't really needed. Uh, you don't generally need Wide Arcs at all, in my opinion. I, I think if you're at a point where the Wide Arc's arc comes into effect, then you're already losing DPS because the other forward weapons aren't able to fire. So the Wide Arc is good to have, but it, it's it's not a must-have. The Quad Phaser Cannons, as I mentioned, do have a negative, but they do look really good, and that helps my immersion, seeing the four Phaser Cannon Bolts come out of the ship. 
And those dual heavy cannons, you know, they don't have to be sensor linked. The, the fact is, I could use crafted dual heavy cannons and basically have no performance difference. The, the difference between specific flavors of phasers, disruptors, and all that is very minor, unless you're under beam overload. So... It really doesn't matter if you want to use a specific color of phasers like the phase biometer because you want blue ones or whatever. It's not going to make any difference. You know, I could have just between the variants of runs, I, I could have a run where I'm using crafted dual heavy cannons over sensor linked and get a better result. Like sensor links buff is nice, but it's not huge. I think that's something a lot of people put a lot of thought into that sensor linked or certain types are much better and that's very rarely the case the the biggest case where it's actually real is spiral wave disruptors and that's because they actually get an extra modifier over other weapons but getting off track there the prolonged cannons are something i know people also like those are in the phoenix store so they're pretty easy to get but in my experience if the content you're doing is really short or if you're going out of red alert every minute or so then they're not really worth running they take a while to build up they start off doing less damage than other weapons and they take a minute or so to build up to do more than other weapons and in my experience it's just not worth running them over another dual heavy cannon other people may have a different opinion about that but that that's my general opinion on it every time i've tried to run the prolonged cannons they're underperforming the other weapons i have on so why am I not using a torpedo? Because I know there's a lot of people that are big fans of like the Dark Matter Quantum and or the EBM. I already mentioned I'm not using the EBM because I didn't want to go that route with this build. I, I as someone that does a lot of torp builds, I am very familiar with how powerful the EBM is with subspatial warheads. But this ship doesn't have concentrate firepower. And if I tell people to go out and run that, you know, they're going to heavily, their performance is going to heavily rely on being in runs with other people that are using concentrated firepower. So it could do better with EBM and subspatial warhead on, but you need specific team compositions for that. And for general use, I think this approach that I'm taking with no torp really on the build is the, a better approach for this. Uh, the Dark Matter Quantum is nice. The two-piece, I know, gives you a 25% crit severity. But, you know, something I've always thought when I'm building ships like this is I, I just generally don't like putting the Torpedo 4 or aft really on a ship like this. There, there is an aft torpedo that I'll talk about here in a minute, but I've just never really been a fan of having like four cannons and a, a torp up front. It generally, in my experience, unless it's something like the EBM, it's usually going to perform worse. Now, that may be different, and I would love to go on the triple test map and try out to see what composition would work better if that having the torp on, you know, actually helps or if it hurts. But unfortunately, the triple test map is currently broken. So that will have to be a different video on a different day. Uh, let's talk about the aft weapons here. So I've got the Advanced Inhibiting Phaser Heavy Turret from the Gamma Reputation. There's a Polaron version that you get early on, and then you get the Phaser version at Tier 6. So that has a nice debuff proc on it, where if you're moving faster than your opponent, then you're debuffing them by... It's a minus 10 damage resistance debuff, so, you know, more debuff is always good. Then I have the Ultimate Omni from the Lobby Store. This has a passive on it that gives you 1% crit chance, which is nice, but... Being on a Miracle Worker ship, and being I'm going to be using Mixed Armament Synergy, I need to have some other non-cannon weapon on the ship that's going to fire off constantly to make sure I'm getting the buff from Mixed Armament Synergy. And this Ultimate Omni just makes the most sense because of the buff it has and then the overall three-piece that I'll talk about on the next slide. So there is a torpedo on the aft of this ship, but you're never going to fire it. If you fire this torpedo off, you're flying the ship wrong. This this torpedo should never fire on your ship. The only reason I even epicked it is because I feel bad if I see a non-epic piece of gear on my ship. So let's talk about these aft weapons a bit more, and especially that ultimate set. 
So the ultimate set has a nice three piece clicky that gives you a hundred percent firing cycle haste for your energy weapons for 12 seconds. Now, it sadly is not affected by unconventional systems, but it's still such a potent buff when it is there. Your weapons are basically firing like twice as fast when you have that active. It's You are firing so much when you have that buff up. So you're using that, if, if, for, if you're doing infected, you're going to use that at the start and at near the end. And the idea with it is you're going and using that against... Uh, or at the points of the runs where you're needing as many buffs as possible, where you're going up against the most opponents and you need to have your weapons firing as much as possible. So this is a huge haste buff, and you see a lot of high-end energy weapon builds running it nowadays. They never fire off the torpedo because the torpedo sucks, but the three-piece is so good that it's worth having that dead weapon in the aft slot over another turret because... That, that firing cycle haste is just real powerful when used correctly. So deflector, engine, core, and shield. I've got the fleet colony deflector for the crit chance and severity buffs. I've got the competitive rep innervated engines. These give me a basically an evasive maneuvers when I hit firing mode bridge officer abilities, which in this case is cannon scatter volley. And then I've got the Discovery, Reputation, Warp Core, and Shield. The Shield has a proc on it that will let me do more damage to the enemy shields. That, that scales with your shield power. And the Warp Core is there because there's a nice two-piece with the shield that gives me some survivability. Plus 120% hull regen is quite a nice uh, bit of survivability. Now, moving over to devices, the first one that you're really going to want to look at is the Energy Amplifier, and you can craft this in either the Beams or Cannons R&D schools. This will provide you a 20% Cat 2 damage boost for energy weapons for 20 seconds. So, that's a nice little damage boost there. Then we have Deuterium Surplus, which is often coined the Evasive in a Can. This will unlock in the Engineering R&D school once you complete the Defense Contracts mission. Then I'm using the Temporal Negotiator. This is from the Delta Recruitment event. This provides instant cooldown reduction for all bridge officer abilities, but it has a five minute cooldown. So I have a, if I have a situation in a run where Boimler's doesn't go off, I can hit this and get the cooldown reduction. It's very powerful. And the last device that I have slotted is the Kobayashi Maru Transponder. This is from one of the no-win scenario events, and it's not really that important. It just gives you a few small boosts, which can be handy at various points throughout the run. Now, let's take a look at consoles. The first thing is, you know, this ship has four attack consoles and then two universal console slots, so you've got five attack consoles from the Fleet Spire you're going to want to slot, and then you're going to want to grab the Lorca's Custom Fire Control console. The Lorca console is very good for the crit chance buff it provides. I think many people are very familiar with it. Pretty much every build right now uses it. And it gives you 157.5 shield pen, which that is the shield pen skill, and that translates into right around 7.9% shield pen. So shield pen, you know, all adds up, and if you have a bunch of sources like this, then that is a very nice DPS increase because you're just, that's more of your damage just going through the enemy shields. Now, moving into the engineering and science consoles, I will note that this build uses no engineering or science specific consoles. So the ne next few slides will be going over each of the specific universal consoles I opted to slot instead. Let's start off with the Tholian Web Spinner. This is from the Tholian event that ran in 2021, and I use this as it does quite a bit of damage against a group of targets. In Infected Elite, I will be using it against the starting group, and then either the gateway or the tac cube at the end. In the run that I did that I will be going over later in this video, I got 47,000 DPS out of it, which for a universal console is pretty good, especially on a non-EPG build. On an EPG build, this console does even more. It's, it's such a good console. And if you want something more immersive for this ship, you might want to consider the Point Defense Bombardment Warhead from the NX, or the Point Defense System from the lower tier, what is it, Heavy Escort Carrier? I forget the exact name, but you can Google it and find the exact ship. Neither of those consoles will do anywhere near that level of damage, but they will look much better and 
will probably be more accessible to you if you miss that Tholian event. The next console is the DPRM. I'm not going to spend much time on this because I think everyone in the game is pretty much aware of this thing at this point, but it is a very nice damage clicky and it provides a lot of surviv survivability while it's active. Now, the Ultimate and Bioneural Infusion Circuits, these are both lobby consoles. I think most people here are going to be familiar with them. The Ultimate is part of the three-piece. It gives me a lot of crit chance. The little drone that it shoots off does basically no damage, so you can ignore it. And the Bioneural Infusion Circuits gives me some crit severity. So, both are good consoles. Both are useful on many different types of builds. Now, looking at the Emulating Phaser Lance, this comes off of the Lockbox Deimos Pilot Destroyer. This is a Tier 6 Infinity Lockbox ship, so it is extremely expensive. It has decent passives, a little bit of phaser damage boost, and some shield pen, but the Clicky is actually the best phaser lance that we have in the game. You'll often see this used in conjunction with Universal Designs, which is the starship trait from the Crossfield Refit, the 32nd century one. And this console is often used on high-level builds to keep full stacks of that trait up. Full stacks of Universal Designs will provide 10% crit chance and 50% crit severity. So this is a very powerful combo, but it's extremely expensive. Now, this Phaser Lance does actually do a lot of damage also, so it's not just used to buff that. The picture you see on here is from the run I did, and I got 63,000 DPS out of this Simulating Phaser Lance, with a max one hit of 521k. Now, I'm not set up to, like, get max one hits or anything, so there's definitely been cases where people have gone higher, and my timing with it is not the best. You want to hit the Phaser Lance usually around groups of targets, because so it can hit multiple of them. And you can spam this thing quite a bit. It has six charges. Each activation consumes one charge. And you get a new charge every 20 seconds. It's it's really good. And I have seen people get 100,000 DPS out of this. This one console by itself in Infected Space Elite if it's timed right. So, very good console. If you can afford it, it's worth it. On a phaser build. And on tort builds, too. All the tort builds are currently using it. Now, let's talk about the Temporal Trajectory Shifter. This is a very nice firing cycle haste console. You want to use it against larger targets because it is a toggle one, and if the target dies, you're losing the buff. The list of ships you can get it off of is up on the screen now, and most of these consoles, the sources will be listed on the PowerPoint pages here. In Infected, you're going to be using this at the start tack cube and at the end against the gateway or tack cube. Targets that are larger and will be alive longer is what you want to use this thing against. The Domino from the Bajoran Interceptor that is currently available for an epic Phoenix uh, token. It provides damage and haste boost. The duration is extended by kills, so it's best to use it at points where you will be killing lots of smaller targets. You're going to be using this at the start of an infected run and then at the gate. All the places you'd be getting a lot of the spheres and stuff that will extend that duration quite a bit. If you get 10 kills while it's up, you will have 30 second duration of these buffs. So it's a very good console. I wish it was the, the recharge speed for Torps was a bit better uh, because I, I think this would be interesting to try on Torp builds, but it's just not quite good enough for those builds right now. Let's uh, head on over to traits. So on these pictures, I have the sources of the traits listed and let's go over the must have traits. A good day to die, if you're tactical, that's a must-have for any tack character. Anchored gives you damage boost for sitting still. It does lower your resistance, but I'm, you know, nobody at the high end cares about resistance. It's not a factor that matters in this game. Anchored provides some nice damage boost. If you're sitting still, great to have on. Intelligent Agent Attaché provides cooldown reduction for captain abilities when you get crit hits with your weapon. Very good. Self-modulating fire is a massive amount of shield pen for 10 seconds every 45 seconds. Very good to have. Terran targeting systems gives you crit severity. Unconventional systems has been talked about myself and others many times over the past few months. And what that does, if you're not familiar, is when you hit control abilities, you're getting a cooldown reduction for your universal console clickies. So with things like the DPRM, Domino, all of those haste consoles that I have, 
I'm getting to use them more in a run because of all of the unconventional systems uh, triggers that I have on the ship. Um, if you're watching this video today, Monday the 3rd of 2022, you're going to see Augmented Dictator putting out a video where he's doing the Legendary NX with Beam Overload, and he's got like seven uncons on there, so you can really see the value of having all the uncon abilities in that video because he gets the haste consoles up so much in that infected run. And the last must-have trait is the Boimler effect, and this is from the Lobby store, and it's also available on the exchange. When you hit Bridge Officer abilities, it has a chance to reduce the recharge time on all other Bridge Officer abilities to their, to their shared category cooldowns, so basically to their global cooldowns. It's extremely powerful. Now, let's take a look at some of the secondary personal space trade options. So, for lockbox ones, we've got Fluidic Cocoon, Fragment of an AI Tech, Inspirational Leader, Intense Focus. All of these are good traits. You know, if you're wanting to see the stats of them, they're all up on the screen. They're, they're good traits, but they're not really anything extraordinary in the current state of the game, in my opinion. Inspirational Leader is still popular for quite a few people. Intense Focus has the nice shield pen on it. Fragment of an AI tech, you know, that, that can provide you with up to 30% Cat 1 energy weapon damage boost just from having control skill. So that, that's a fairly easy trait to get in slot. Uh, Fluidic Cocoon, if you're being shot at by a lot of Torps, which in the board queues you would be, that's also pretty good. That can give you up to 15%. Cat 2 energy weapon damage boost. Uh, so, the, you know, there's a lot of good secondary traits here. And there are some free ones. If you're running in a full team, Fleet Coordinator is really good. Uh, that will give you up to 10% Cat 2 all damage. And then Superior Cannon Training. Cannon Training is free, and then the Superior version comes from Fleet K13. Uh, the Superior version gives you 7.5% Cat 2 bonus cannon weapon damage. It's there. It's It's okay but it's not necessarily a must-have but it is an option now let's take a look at starship traits all of the sources for the starship traits are going to be listed below them so i won't spend a ton of time talking about all the options for them because there's quite a few for some of these traits so we've got emergency weapon cycle that gives you minus weapon power cost and firing cycle haste when you hit emergency power to weapons there's Withering Barrage, which gives you, ex or it extends the duration of Ganon Scatter Volley by 4 seconds, taking it from 10 seconds to 14 seconds. That means that you have 14 out of 15 second uptime. And then we have Terran Goodbye, which is a more expensive trade. It's from a lockbox ship, the Mirror Warship. But it gives you up to plus 75 accuracy and plus 15% crit chance from killing targets. So that's a very potent trait. I'm using that right now on pretty much all of my DPS builds. Moving over to the next set of traits, the Ruin of Our Enemies. This trait is really popular right now. It provides you a damage boost that will, it's a 3% damage boost for 20 seconds that stacks up to 100 times. And each time you get a kill, it resets the duration of all the other stacks you have of it. So this, this trait can provide up to 300% Cat 2 damage boost. It's extremely powerful, and if you're running content where you're killing targets really fast and you're constantly staying in combat, this trait really good to have. It's from the D7 Miracle Worker Flight Deck Carrier, so it is off a promo ship. It's insanely expensive, but there is a chance you might be able to find a Fed Pack from before the cross faction changes that happened in February of 2021. But I'll say good luck finding one. I'm in need of one for my fed side because I'm trying to get that higher up on the DPS tables and I have had no luck at all finding one. Uh, then we have Universal Designs. This is, I've talked about this with the Phaser Lance earlier, and this is off the Crossfield Refit, the 32nd century one. Gives you up to 10% crit chance and 50 severity. You get stacks for it from hitting Universal Consoles, and that Phaser Lance is really good at keeping that, that up. You just don't want to spam bar the Phaser Lance, you want to time it. So you're hitting it once every 10 to 15 seconds. And the last trait that I chose to slot is Rapid Emitting Armaments. This is off the legendary Dideridex. And when you hit Tractor Beam, this is going to give you a bonus damage boost for torpedoes, which I don't have on the ship. But the big thing about it is the amount of damage that the heavy plasma torps from it do. In the run that I did for the Inquiry, 
that I will show you here in a few minutes, this trait did almost 78k DPS without me running anything for torpedoes. So this trait is really powerful, but I will tell you it will mess with your piloting if you like to get really close to targets. If you are within two kilometers of a target when these things blow up, you're going to go down with them. There are a lot of runs that I've been in where the person has ended up nuking themselves because they hit this, they hit their tractor beam too close to the target. So there is some skill involved with this trait, but if you can nail it, man, th these things hit hard. So if you have access to the legendary Dideradex and that trait, it is worth trying it out. It's crazy good. So let's talk about space rep traits now. And I've got the advanced targeting systems on for the crit severity, precision for the crit chance, and Tyler's duality for the crit chance. And then I've got enhanced shield pen for the shield pen for energy weapons and magnified firepower for the cat two damage boost that provides. If you wanted to get some healing, something I don't have listed on here, but would be good is energy refrequencer. And that just gives you a small heal with each outgoing shot. So if you find you need some survivability, I would say to grab energy refrequencer and drop magnified firepower for it. Uh, that is a pretty good survivability trait. And if you need a lot more survivability, then consider maybe more some of the, t the colony tack consoles, which I also don't have those on here, but you know, th those are good for survivability if you end up needing it. So let's take a look at the active space rep traits. These, you know, there's not many choices for these, so I've got anti-time on for the damage boost, the biomolecular shield generator for the shield healing that that can provide, deploy sensor platforms for when I need to take threat off of me, quantum singularity manipulation is there for if I ever need it, and then the refracting tetrion cascade is there because, you know, that, that can give you some damage if you, if you hit it in the right spot when there's a lot of targets around you. It can do quite a bit in those scenarios. Now let's hop on over and check out the bridge officers that I opted to go with and what abilities I opted to slot. So starting off with the commander engineer that has Merrick Worker on it, I went for emergency power to engines one. This provides a speed boost and it triggers the emergency con hologram, which will reset my evasive maneuvers. So whenever I hit this emergency power to engines, I'll have evasive backup shortly afterwards. In the lieutenant slot, I've went for emergency power to weapons two. This gives me a weapons power, of course, and triggers the emergency weapon cycle trait that I talked about before. In the Lieutenant Commander slot, I slotted Narrow Sensor Bands 3. This provides a damage boost for energy weapons based on my distance to the target. And in the Commander slot, I've went with Mixed Armament Synergy 3. This gives me a damage boost when I fire off a different weapon type. So an example would be when I fire off that ultimate Omni, I am boosting the cannons that I have on the ship. Now for the Bridge Officer itself, I went with the Romulan exclusive Bridge Officer that you get from the Delta Operations Expansion Pack. This comes with Superior Subterfuge and Superior Romulan Operative. If you don't have this and are a Romulan, then just slot an Engineer that has the Superior Romulan Operative trait. And if you're not a Romulan, then the next best choice would be the Engineering Vanguard Bridge Officer from the Gamma Expansion Pack. This doesn't have SRO on it, but it does have the next best thing. The Vanguard trait I don't remember the name of, but it gives you 1% crit chance and 2.5% severity, so it's better than nothing at all. Now, the Lieutenant Commander Universal and Intel, I'm running exclusively Intel abilities on it. So, the Ensign slot has Viral Impulse Burst 1. This is used as an unconventional systems trigger. Then in the Lieutenant slot, I have Electromagnetic Pulse Probe. This is also an unconventional systems trigger. In the Lieutenant Commander slot, I am running Override Subsystem Safeties 3. This provides a large power boost and will push you far above the 125 power cap. So that is a very nice extra punch for your weapons while it's up. You just have to hope that it doesn't then shut off your weapons when it ends, because that is something that can happen. For this, I'm also running a Romulan with Superior Romulan Operative, because that gives me crit chance and severity. And if you are a non-Romulan, then you would just grab a rom tack that has the superior Romulan operative trait from your fleet embassy. And as I said, if you're Romulan, you know, just anything you can get with SRO on it. In the Lieutenant Commander tack, I'm running Fire at Will 1 for the aft Omni that I have on. 
I'm running attack pattern beta 1 in the lieutenant slot for the debuff that provides. And it also triggers the beta heal off that I have slotted, which I'll talk about later. And then I have the cannon scatter volley 2 slotted in the lieutenant commander slot because this build is a scatter volley build and it needs to have scatter volley on there somewhere. For this, it's another superior Romulan operative bridge officer, not a surprise. You know, if you can get a superior Romulan operative in a in a slot, you should be slotting it. They are the best bridge officers you can get in the game. In the Ensign Universal, I have this set set to tack, and I have Chemosite Laced Weaponry 1 slotted. This won't do much damage in the run I did with the Inquiry. It did 6.7k, but, you know, it has a chance to debuff targets. It does okay damage for an Ensign ability. I like slotting it. You could slot distributed targeting, and I forget the other name of the ability you could slot, but, you know, just it, find something that works for you, you know, if you don't want to do chemo site. There's a lot of flexibility with this specific seat. And as with every other tax seat, it's a Romulan bridge officer with superior Romulan operative. In the Lieutenant Psy seat, I've got Tractor Beam 1 on. This is an unconventional systems trigger, and it also triggers that rapid emitting armament straight I talked about that fires off those heavy plasma torps. Just be careful using it, of course, because as I've mentioned before, it can very easily kill you if you're too close. In the Lieutenant seat, I've got Scramble Sensors 1. This is an unconventional systems trigger, and if you're Romulan, you use Superior Romulan Operative, if you're not Romulan, the next best thing is the Science Vanguard Bridge Officer from the Gamma Expansion Pack. After that, I don't know what to tell you. Just run whatever. The, the Pirate, you know, once you get past the SRO Bridge Officers and them Vanguards, it doesn't really matter what you slot. They're all bad. So the skill tree that I'm using is a pretty standard tackle setup. There's, you know, I could probably dump more in control for that fragment of an AI trait, get a little bit more cat one damage boost there, but this is what I've been running now for a little bit. It works. You know, there might be changes you can make to make it a little bit better for yourself, but this is what works for me, and it's what I've opted to go with. For the little circle things at the bottom i've got an arrow pointing towards what selection i chose you know batteries are of course very important to buff so make sure you're always choosing that battery option on as the first engineering node that is going to massively improve the uh, amount of uptime you get out of your batteries so let's talk about power levels and the cruiser command you know power levels max weapon power you know, don't if you're running this build with like just the basic, you know, even across the board power levels, then just know that I'm disappointed. I want you to know that for any of you running balanced power levels, I'm sad. Then after weapons, you know, dump the rest in shields to buff that Tilly shield proc. So with where my shield power is here, I'm getting a 17% damage boost against a weapon for weapon attacks against shields. So if you are able to dump more shield power in, you can get that a little bit higher, but it's not worth taking away from weapons to bump that up. That is not a worthy trade. For the command aura, I am using the weapon system efficiency one. This gives me a minus weapon power cost for myself and any nearby teammates. So it's a good, good one to have on. Duty officers. The first one is Agent Nerul. This is that beta healed off I talked about. It is available exclusively from the Delta Operations Pack. Yeah, it's it's a really expensive pack, like 150 bucks. And this stuff is good for tanking. It's good for survivability. You know, it's not a must-have on a DPS platform, but I like slotting it just because the healing it provides is quite handy. There are no other versions of it, unfortunately. I wish that there was, but Cryptic has kept that exclusive to that expansion pack and wants you to spend a lot of money to get it. Then I've got the Crit Chance and Crit Severity Energy Weapon Officers on. There's lots of different variants of these with different names. The, the rares of these are fine. You know, if you're on a budget, just get the rares. The difference between the rares and the very rares is they have a 3% chance to proc instead of 4%. Hey, you're going to build the stacks up fairly fast either way, so if you want to save money, just get the blues for now, because you're going to need a lot of EC for the next set of DOFs. 
So the uh, the first one on this page is the emergency comm hologram. This works with evasive or with emergency powered engines. When you hit emergency powered engines, it resets the cooldown of evasive maneuvers. I have used this on basically every build for the last decade. It's a really good DOF to slot. And then the two really expensive DOFs are 24 of 47 and 27 of 47. What they do, you can read there. They're both insanely expensive. I have sold a 27 for a billion EC before, so really expensive and yeah if you can get them they're great if you're on a budget just you know just slot some random dos out there I, I don't i don't know what random dos to say to slot but if you're on a budget you know these things cost as much as a ship and i would understand you prioritizing getting a ship rather than duty officers but they are very good if you can get them but you're gonna have to take out a second mortgage on your house to afford all these things so in most of the build videos, I don't really go in depth on how I set up the tray and the key vines. And in this video, I'm going to try to do that. So key, uh, this is basically the Torp key vines that I showed off a few months ago from annual fire, but there's been some slight modifications like adding fire, all cannons and beams to my F key. I have always used the F key on my keyboard, basically as my space bar. I know that's going to sound weird to people, but I, I don't actually use the spacebar that much. I always used F and G like back in the day and like I'll occasionally hit spacebar. Back in the day, I used to have my emergency power to subsystem abilities on it, but nowadays I don't really hit it that much. So the F key is basically my spacebar. If you wanted to mimic these key binds and this tray setup and try it out yourself, you could go and do that. And just customize it, have FB, have that tray 10 be your space bar instead of the F key. I do believe in separating abilities between keys. Like, I think you don't, I, I think it's a bad idea to have something like your alpha, go down fighting, override subsystem safeties, these bigger buffs on your spam bar. I think having those on a secondary key bind is beneficial, and I think that is something that will separate the, you know, an average player from those that are performing at a higher level because the, the having that separation of abilities, the, the ability to control what is being activated when is very advantageous, especially when you're talking about min-max levels of performance. You don't want to spam bar an alpha at the wrong time when you're not going to get much damage boost out of it. So having the separate keybinds, I think, is very beneficial. Looking at this is probably confusing the hell out of people, so I'm not going to spend much time on it. If you have questions about it, I've got a lot of discussion about it in the manual Torp Fire video that I did a few months ago. I just adapted that keybind because that's what I'm now used to, to energy weapons. And the first thing I would say is just make sure Scatter Volley is slotted first. You may even want to manually hit Scatter Volley because this ability just loves misfire for some reason. The server and the game just hates energy weapon abilities because they misfire all the time for me. Now, for controls, this is something that I think often is overlooked. And I'll, you just pause this and, you know, go copy these over to what you have. But this is this is what I've been running and what I've had success with. This may not be the best, you know, best combination of things ever, but this is what works for me. You know, maintain auto attack helps, especially for me with the, my tort builds, spamming out mines. And... I just found that this was working pretty well for the runs that I was doing with this inquiry. Now, before we get to the end of the video, I am going to show you uh, or just walk you through a infected run I did with this ship. This was a supported run with a full with a four man team. So it could have done a little bit more if there had been a fifth in there from our debuff. But, you know, it still performed extremely well for being pure scatter volley with no EBM subspatial crap on it. So let's go check that out now, and then I'll wrap the video up. Okay, now we're at the fun part of the video where I go over the run that I did with the ship. So in this run, I had two engineers in the Odyssey. The Odyssey is a very good haste support platform for energy weapons because it has the flagship computer on it. So engineers are also beneficial because they can give me the EPS power transfer, I believe it is. That gives me the power level boost. So you see that I have that applied to me right now. It's got the 17 timer on it here as we're about to go in. 
and I have the flagship tactical computer that was just hit at four seconds. I was probably hit a bit early in this run, but whatever. So let's see how this plays out. You see that I'm hitting my fleets. I, I'm basically, if I scroll back just a smidge here, you know, I'm doing a lot of the things that I talked about in the uh, the ISC flight path guide for torpedoes. I'm doing a lot of the same things, but I'm not, I obviously don't have a high yield to hit or things like that. You know, I'm, some abilities were probably hit on me a bit early, like the CPS power transfer was hit way too early, but still, this, this, this run went fairly well. You know, I, I hit emergency power to engines at 17 seconds. I A few seconds before going in, I've hit all of my, my fleets, my alpha, all the big buffs. As I'm going in, I'm hitting the haste abilities, like that ultimate three piece which provides a massive haste buff for 12 seconds so hitting that just as i'm going in provides maximum uptime up uptime on that web spinner a lot of my aoe abilities I'm, I have my uncon abilities off of the spam bars because I want to wait for most of the consoles to have their... to be on cooldown before I hit them. If I hit these while they, the consoles are still active, which I did with the case of the DPRM, I am losing cooldown reduction for the DPRM and I won't have it up as fast in the run. So I did make a mistake there and that is something you generally want to try to avoid. You want to wait for your consoles to not have this duration timer on them like this. The base, or deuterium over to the side. Positioning myself. I, I messed up and went a bit to the side, but you know, I, I went, positioned myself at a point where I can hit these back, tran the back generators alongside the, the transformer. By sitting still, I'm letting anchored stacks build up. Though it looks like looking at this this bar here, it looks like I don't know, even I didn't actually have anchored slotted. Yeah, this, this was not the best run, but it just shows the potential of scatter volley. And if you're tired of me skipping over it. The full video for this run is going to be linked in the description below for this specific run if you want to watch it without my commentary over it. Doing the same positioning at the right side, I'm probably a bit too far away from the transformer, being I am on energy weapons and then I'm trying to use narrow sensor bands. But I have a lot of torpedo flight path mentality stuck in my head, and that, that's something that is going to be extremely hard for me to break while I am still mainly firing or mainly flying torpedo builds. So that is a limitation that uh, someone that's more dedicated to energy weapons might not have an issue with. And I am opting to not hit the domino console at the side because I know that if I hit it at the gate, then I'm going to get more boost out of it because killing all those generator or all of the spheres at the gate is going to extend the duration of it. Okay, so I've just hit domino. You see it's at nine seconds and as I kill things here, that duration is going to extend. So you see already it's right here, it's got 16 seconds on it. So by timing it, being patient and timing abilities like Domino and these other haste things at the right spots, you're getting more out of them and increasing your overall DPS potential. A lot of people will spam bar things like the domino and they're losing DPS because of it. So timing, as with many DPS things, is extremely important.
be fair, Spencer, you're about to like crush a non CGM detail record. We're at 1.2 right now. So at the end here, I started to drop off and that is because you have to keep in mind, I am running scatter volley and not like rapid fire. Some other cannon builds out there, like if y'all were using a scimitar, for example, or the juggernaut, I would have a rapid fire on there also so that I could swap to that at the end and continue climbing. But because I only had scatter volley on this build, because I'm very limited by the bridge officer seating of it. I wasn't able to really climb that well at the end, but it was still this. This was 1.14 on energy weapons without the EBM and subspatial hunt. So to me, that you know, that's a pretty good result. I'll pull up the parse now, and this parse file will be down in the description below if you want to check it out yourself. You know, this was 1.14. We could see the, the DPS chart. I had a fairly good spike at the start, and that's because I timed that ultimate console or the ultimate three piece to help me out at the start there. I was doing so much. It was allowing me to fire so much at that start group. If I look at the damage chart, you can see, you know, there were lots of nice spikes. I had a spike of about 7 million, about eight or so seconds in there, which is pretty good. Uh, let me, this, the text is probably really small, so it'll, I, I, you know, some of you may want to just look at the parse yourself, and as I said, it will be linked down below. So, in this run, I had the prolonged dual uh, phasers on, and this is what I was talking about with how they don't often perform well for me, and in this case, neither did the wide arc, actually. You know, if I were going back, I might even drop the wide arc for just another the DHC. So the sensor-linked dual heavy cannon did the second best after the Terran. You know, of course, nothing is going to beat the Terran. The Terran did 186,000 DPS by itself. That is more than half the player base does with their entire build. You know, the Terran is just so powerful. Crit chance on everything was super high because of all the crit chance buffs I have and the fact that I'm on a Romulan. The fact that I have Endeavors, you know, maxed out, like... That's a factor I think people aren't considering, too, when we share builds. You know, I've got quite a bit more in Endeavors than, you know, a new player would have. You know, a new player that doesn't have anything in Endeavors is missing out on that 10% crit chance, the 40 severity, the, the cat 1 damage boost for energy weapons, projectiles, whatever. I've been very fortunate with mine because I missed out on about a year and a half to two years of Endeavors because I stopped playing for a little bit there. But... That, you know, that's something we don't often factor in when we're doing these builds and saying to people, you know, oh yeah, we're at 100% crit chance, but we also have just passive stat boost from playing the game a long time. Um, so the wide arcs performed the worst out of the lineup. Prolonged were the second worst. They weren't that far behind, like the quad phasers or the, the normal dual heavy cannons, but there is... There almost always is a gap between them and other cannons to me. And keep in mind, when I had the prolonged on, they were slotted fourth. So they weren't even the last weapon to fire. The dual heavy cannons were the last to fire, and they performed the best after the Terran. So you might want to slot just four dual heavy cannons with the Terrans if you're trying to eke out as much as possible. That might be slightly better than what I did. Uh, pets, you'll see, did 94k. You know, that's uh, most of that is the heavy plasma torps, that re rapid emitting armament trait from firing off the tractor beam. It fires those torps that hit super hard. Anti time singularity. If you time this right and hit it against, like, the gate and infected or against a large group of targets, it's going to do a lot of damage. It's it, This can be the difference between you getting a record or not if you're competing on the tables if you don't hit anti-time you know it could have been that little bit of damage you were missing out that would have pushed you over somebody else uh for the rest of the abilities there's nothing really 
that noticeable. I mean, the Phaser Lance did 63k in this run, and I messed up timing it. The Phaser Lance you do not want to spam because you'll burn through the charges of it before it can recharge them all. So just be careful with that to try to manually time it and time it against a group of targets that are close together. It does do some AOE on it. Uh, the chain web I showed off earlier doing 47k, and I think that pretty much wraps this up. I did have some CF procs. Did I fire off the torpedo on this? I must have uh, fired the torp off at some point. And oh, oh, rapid emitting armaments. Okay, so the concentrate firepower was marked on targets, and then rapid emitting armaments gave me some additional damage through concentrate firepower. That makes sense. I was confused there for a second. Oh, uh, Heavy Plasma Torps even did more than what I initially said, because they did 78k here. So let's add this up. 16269.11 plus 7, 7, 8, 5, 9, 1, 8. So the those rapid emitting armaments actually did 94k for me in this run. Not just 78k like I said earlier. So just emphasizing how important that trait is, the potential of it. It's a very good trait to have. But that wraps up the live portion of this. Now let's cut back to me ending the video. And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. And if you're interested in having a heavily detailed build video like this for a ship of your choice, it is a membership option on both my YouTube and Patreon accounts, which are linked in the description down below. This is uh, priced a bit higher than you may expect because some of these ships that people may want builds for are quite costly. They may cost a bit to obtain, the time investment getting the video together can be several hours. The Getting the PowerPoint for this done was four hours overall. So there's a lot of time investment getting the build together, testing the build, getting the PowerPoint done, doing the audio recording, doing the editing. You know, it, it is something that takes a bit of time and it is charged, you know, at, at the level you would expect for the amount of time that it is taking me and the amount of investment it may require for me to get the components together for that specific build. The lead time will probably be a week or two in most cases. If I have things going on in real life like happened in this case, it could be, you know, upwards of a month. Real life hit me hard in December just with some family issues as I shared in the community post. Everything is fine, but you know, it's that there are cases where I have things going on in real life and that, you know, that has to take priority. But if you do that tier, you know, reach out to me, tell me what you want, and I'll get it done. You'll have the build within a day or two, and the actual video will be out a little bit later. Well, a few weeks later. And, you know, if you're someone that has helped me out in the past, you've bought, you know, if you've bought like an expansion pack for me or something like that, then just reach out to me. You know, you don't have to pay for this if you've helped me out in the past. You know, just reach out and say, hey, can you get this done? And I'll, you know, I'll do what I can and get it done when I have the opportunity. But that is it for this video. Hopefully this has been helpful for people. Hopefully, you know, the, the amount of depth I did with this compared to a traditional build video actually makes it easier for people to copy paste the build if they want, especially being I have the tray there. I showed you how I used it in a run. So hopefully this extra detail helps people out a bit more than normal. But that is it for this video. Thank you for watching and I will see you all next time.